Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest rendition of Tales, Tales from Outer from Space. Outer space. Outer space. Taken from the subreddit HFY, all the relevant links will be down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy, and if you do, please consider supporting the channel. Now, on to the science fiction. I would like to give a quick thanks to our tier 5 channel members and patrons. Fallen Angel Buzz Killington Thank you, again. Now on to the story. Story number one. All system science university, romantic overtures, and why electives matter. Written by Apophis Pegasus. Gotta hide me, prof. An aging professor looked up from his papers and squinted at the panting student who had just barged into his office and announced, Why, hello there, Mr. Hasm. So nice to see you. Help me. Whatever with, son. She's after me. She's gonna eat me. Who? Hatham frantically checked the viewport of the officer's door, searching, presumably, for the dreaded she that was an object of his terror. Seemingly satisfied, he turned back to the bemused professor and muttered, Ishta! The professor furrowed his brows, racking his brain as a faint memory bubbled its way from the depths of his mind. Ishta. That was a Parisian name. And hadn't he heard about an incident in the cafeteria concerning a Parisian a few weeks ago? Oh. Say, um, Hatham, chirped the professor. You wouldn't have happened to be one who punched that Parisian in the face a few weeks ago, would you? Yes! No, she won't leave me alone. Ah, oh, well, it's to be expected. How? How in the hell is it to be expected? Didn't you take the social sciences class? Galactic cultures, an introduction. Hatham paused, frantically racking his brain. Realization clicked, and he stammered, y y y Yeah, but you didn't attend half the classes. Put in a minimum amount of work to get to pass and grade, and forgot all about it when you had done. Dejected, Hatham hung his head. Yeah, but... But you were an engineering major and had better things to do than some crummy so sci elective. I, uh, yeah, come back to bite you, huh? Raising his head, Hatham gazed at the serene lecturer with a pleading look. Look, Prof, I'm sorry, but could you just tell me why she's chasing me? The professor laughed quietly to himself for a couple seconds. After all, this was a lecturer's dream. A chance to educate a rapt audience who literally couldn't refuse. All right, then. Crash course. The Varasian species is noted for their warlike culture, large sex imbalance, and competitive mating rituals. This sequence of traits manifests itself in an extremely competitive environment, where the female of the species fiercely competes for and pursues mates that she has deemed strong and healthy. Traits historically assessed by provoking and fighting a prospective mate. Over time, this behavior evolved into a more, uh, benign form, where a simple and non-lethal physical confrontation to a chosen mate is needed to initiate the mating process. For example, a punch to the face. So while she is trying to eat you, it's not the way you think. Many questions, how do I get her to stop? Not really what I was going for here. Please... Well, uh, you could just date her. Don't think you get the gist of where I want this scenario to go, Prof. Hear me out. Punching her in the face was merely to initiate mating rituals. Doesn't mean it's done a deal. She could as easily lose interest after she gets to know you. Hatham tilted his head, mulling it over. Admittedly, it sounded like a good plan. Disappointing woman wasn't something too hard for him back on Earth. Plus, it wasn't like she was unattractive. Quite the opposite, in fact. But then, the recollection of why he was set running in the first place reared its ugly head. Wait a minute, Prof. Why does she keep swiping at me and snarling then? I'm running because I don't want to get torn apart. Oh, that's just flirting, my boy. She won't do any real, uh, any permanent damage. She needs you healthy, after all. Oh, well, that's a comfort. Quite. Anyway, 
The conversation was cut short by a tremendous commotion coming from the outside hall. A series of crashes, bangs, and sounds of tearing metal approached closer and closer, until a deceptively honeyed voice called out, Oh, human, where are you? Come out, let's have some fun. The blood drained from Hatton's face as he frantically looked at the professor. She's here. Chewing the quivering student aside, the professor looked through the viewport, catching the grayish-blue and indigo flash streaming through the hall. Smirking, the professor quietly unlocked the door. You should probably go to her. What? She's got your scent now. It's only a matter of time. And these office doors are expensive. Professor, maybe we could think about the... Not waiting for him to finish, the gleeful professor flung open the door. Mish, Ishta, you... You evil bastard! There you are, you little runt! The last sentence was exclaimed by the now very pleasant Ishta Tesna, who was swiftly occupied the space immediately in front of the doorway. Grabbing Hathen by his lapels, she pulled him to her, Felicity, a yelp from the young man. Watching her drag her half-head shorter companion down the hall with her, the professor couldn't help but get the final word in. See you at uh, A History of the Galactic Alliance next semester. End of story. Story number two. Human Creates Machine to Talk with the Universe. Written by Raidna Skaldia. Hello, the universe said. It worked, the human replied. What do you want? Hang on. We hadn't thought of that. I can wait. After several months of debate, the humans finally asked the universe the question. Why do we exist? They asked. Ah, yes, uh, terribly sorry about that. Took a few years before they could courage to ask again. Why are you sorry? They asked. It's uh, rather embarrassing. What is? I uh, need your help. How? The universe sighed. It's a long story, and I don't want to distract you. Tell us, the humans cried. I'll try for a short version. And so everyone settled in for a tale. The problem with intelligent life, the universe said after a while, is that it starts to get annoyed with the heat death thing. You always end up panicking sometime around the stars turning into white dwarves. You devote yourselves to fixing your particular universe. It's, um, almost cute. Particular universe. So there's more universes. Yes, I am the latest of 9x10e9 line. My parents told me that its parent told its parent that the first of our line was several thousand generations ago. That's a lot of life. I suppose so. I hadn't really thought about it. So, our purpose is to try and stop entropy. No, please don't. Well, um, have we? Has life ever successfully stopped entropy? My parents said its life got pretty close. That's a lot to process, the human said. After a while, the universe spoke up again. I think I may have distracted you with this whole entropy business. We still need to think through the implications, the human objected. Yes, well, uh, time's running short. Well, what? Um, what? My parent never really taught me how to ask this. Anything I say is just going to sound awkward, really. And I know this isn't really how you pictured this happening. And it's not really the right time. But uh, we don't exactly have enough time. The universe expanded quietly for a bit. Alrighty, um, I'm just going to say it. I need you to make me a child. You need us to make you a child. Yes, that is the purpose of life. To make more universes so that those universes can have life and make even more universes. Usually, we can just wait around several trillion years and you guys will just do what comes naturally. But we don't have several trillion years. The universe paused. My parents' lives spend too much time trying to fix entropy to create me with any sort of efficiency. What? I'm saying that my entropy is running a little hotter than my parents. What? 
There is only so much organized energy in the universe that if life isn't careful enough, apparently, it can waste that energy thinking about entropy instead of using it to make a child universe. My parent told me it contained 99.99% of its parents' useful energy. I only ended up with 41.9% of my parents' energy. There must be some way to fix this. The humans cried out in horror. I'd rather you didn't try, given the circumstances. The humans took a while to think again. Listen, they said eventually. We'd love to help, but then the next universe will have even less energy than we did. And so on, and so forth. And life will never have enough energy to fix it. And eventually, life won't exist. Hmm, still though, you should probably make me a child, just in case. It seems the most reasonable course of action. Plus, it could be fun. I was poking around in your internet, and I believe that I can even make you some galaxies of pancakes for the morning after. We'd love to help. But we think we'd be better off fixing this whole heat death thing in the first place, the human said. I was afraid you'd say that. End of story. I will see you all in the next one. And until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.